not everyone's lucky enough to live in Yorkshire. So last Christmas we decided to make some gift boxes packed with goodies that we could send to our friends and family. In this video we're going to look at how I made the wooden boxes using hand tools only. I also made some of the boxes using machine tools. Check out the channel for a video covering that project. This is a relatively cheap project when it comes to materials. We just need a short length of plain square edge softwood and some thin plywood for the base and lid. All in all the whole material bill is going to come to less than £5. I found this cardboard box which is round about the right size for the project so I'll take some measurements to use as a dimension guide. The softwood I'm using is twice as thick as I need it so I'll be resawing it. This means I only need to cut enough wood for one side and one end as I'll end up with twice the amount once I resaw. I measure out the length I need and then add a little bit more for wastage. Using my marking knife against a square I mark the point for the first cut. I follow the knife mark all the way around the wood. This acts as a nice guide for the eye while sawing and also helps to make a clean cut, especially in soft wood. I locate my knife in the corner of the previous cut and then bring the square to meet it. I then carry on the mark. This ensures it's square all the way round. I place my chisel two or three millimetres from the outside of the line and chisel down diagonally to meet the bottom of the knife mark. This will help to locate my saw when I start to cross cut. I take my tenon saw, put it in the mark that I've just made and saw through the wood. I keep my eye on the mark on the edge of the wood to ensure that I'm cutting straight. The wood isn't wide enough on its own to form a side of the box so I'm going to need another piece the same size. I use the initial piece to mark up another length of wood. I then mark, chisel and saw in the same way. I then measure out the lengths for the end of the boxes and cut them in the same way. I now have all the wood I need for the sides of the box ready and cut to length. Next I'm going to use a shooting board to ensure that everything is square. To do this I set my piece against the fence and then move the plane along the edge. I maintain a constant pressure with my thumb to push the workpiece into the plane iron. Slowly feeding it in until everything is square. I repeat this for all the pieces. Not only is the shooting board a good way of getting the end square but it's also a good way of making sure that things that have been cut separately can be trimmed to be exactly the same length. In order to resaw the material I'm going to need to mark the middle of each length. I do this by taking a measurement and then setting my marking gauge to half of the thickness of the wood. I then check that the marking gauge is set correctly by marking in from one side and then the other and making sure that the pinholes line up. If they don't I can adjust accordingly. I then use the gauge to mark the centre all the way round the length of wood. I position the piece in the vise so that I can easily see one of the corners. Then using a handsaw I'll start to cut the wood in half starting at that corner. I take things slowly and make sure I use the gauge mark as a guide to keep the saw square. I keep sawing, every now and again repositioning the piece in the vise for ease. When I'm about two thirds of the way through I take a card scraper and place it in the cut. This allows me to clamp the piece without squashing the two sides together which would cause the saw to bind. 
I then complete the cut. And now we have two pieces. Resawing by hand can leave things a little rough, so we use a plane to smooth everything down. The plane is doing two jobs. Firstly we're getting a nice smooth surface, and secondly we'll use it to dimension the wood so that everything is the same thickness. I'm using a number 4 smoothing plane with quite a shallow set as I don't want to remove too much material. I've resawn all my pieces, so now I can plane them all in the same session. By placing the pieces side by side, and then rotating end for end, I can feel for any thickness discrepancy, and adjust by planing the thicker one down. I use a card scraper just to get a nice smooth finish. Once I have some matching pairs, I tape them together to stop them getting mixed up. And I'll plane up all the other pairs to match. I'm going to use some of these shavings later. The material we're using isn't wide enough to make the height of the edge of a box, so we're going to have to laminate two pieces together. However, we can turn this disadvantage into an advantage. Rather than make joints for the corner of the box, we can actually engineer one in. To do this, what I'm actually going to do is cut one piece of each pair in half lengthways. That will give us three pieces per side. I'll then glue these three pieces together, but I will offset the centre piece from the two edge pieces. First of all, I'm going to find the middle of one of each of the lengths. To do this, I'm going to use the gauge in the same way as I did when we were preparing for resawing except this time we're going to make the mark on the face of the board. I've numbered each board to make sure that I don't mix up the pairs. I'll mark both faces in order to help guide the saw. I'll fill in the gauge mark with a pencil just to make it easier to see. We'll place each board in the vise and saw through it halfway. This is much easier than resawing, as we're sawing with the grain. In fact, you have to be careful not to go too fast and split the wood. I repeat the process for one piece of each pair. I know the unsawn pieces of each pair are still the same width, but I need to be sure that the newly sawn pieces are all of equal width. Otherwise, when we laminate everything together, each side of the box will be uneven. To do this, I put the pieces together in a vise and plane them together. Although these pieces all now match, there is the possibility that they're no longer square, by which I mean that the opposite edges are not completely parallel. To fix this potential problem, I'll start by measuring each end of one of the pieces. It would appear that the right-hand side is a little bit shorter than the left-hand side, so what I'll do is I'll set my gauge to the height on the right-hand side, and score a line across the length of that wood, using the unsawn and unplaned edge as a reference surface. 
I then place the pieces back in the vise together and plane them using the gauge mark as a guide for square. Once I plane down to the gauge mark I know that everything is nice and square. A quick double check with the ruler to be sure and then repeat the process for the end pieces. We can now be sure that the box height is going to be the same all the way round. Next I measure the required internal length of the box onto one of the wider side faces. This is going to be the guide for our offset when we start to engineer the joints. Using a square I transfer this mark onto the other side. This will ensure that both sides are uniform and so the box will come together square. Right, it's time to laminate the sides up. I've got my clamps set up, so I'm going to put a bead of glue along the edge of one of the narrower boards. Moving it backwards and forwards against the other edge helps the glue to bond. I repeat this with the other side. You'll feel the glue starting to grab as you move it backwards and forwards. The aim now is to line up the narrow boards with the mark we made on the wider board. This creates the offset for our joint. Once lined up we clamp together, adding a little bit of pressure at a time so as not to pull everything out of square. I'm constantly checking the alignment of the boards to make sure everything still lines up with the mark. Once in position I wipe off the excess glue and leave everything to cure. It's important not to over tighten the clamps as this might introduce a bow into the board. Once the glue has cured we release the clamps and get ready to tidy up the boards. I start by removing any excess glue with a card scraper. I then plane with a very shallow set, just to smooth off and also to remove any bowing or cupping that I may have introduced into the board whilst clamping. It's often easier to feel imperfections as opposed to see them. After the planing I'm happy that all the boards are now flat, so I'll just finish the surface with a bit of card scraping. This can get the surface even smoother than using a plane. A good sharp card scraper should leave you with some nice shavings. If your shavings are more like sawdust, then you'll need to think about putting a new cutting edge onto your card scraper. With the boards nicely finished, it's time to do a quick dry assembly. I'm checking that the offsets that form the joints are fitting nicely together, not too tight and not too loose. One of the joints is a little tight, so I put the board in a vise and use a chisel to pare down one of the tenons, taking off a small amount of material at a time. I'll test and trim until everything fits nicely. Once fitting I'm going to mark up the corners so that I make sure I put everything back the same way next time. Then I'll take apart the box and lay out with the internal faces upwards. I'm going to need to cut a groove or housing or dado into each face of the box in order to take the sliding lid, so I roughly mark the position of these. Also on the bottom of each face I'm going to need to cut a rebate or rabbit to take the base of the box. To cut this rebate or rabbit I'm going to use this number 78 plane. So first I'll set my board into the vise. Then I need to set up the plane. First I set up the fence position. This will control the width of the rebate, i.e. how much it cuts in from the face of the board. 
Next, I want to control the depth stop. This will control how deep the rebate is, i.e. the depth from the edge of the board. In effect, we're going to take a rectangular slice out of the edge of the board. When using this kind of plane, it's always best to start at the end of the board. Start to cut, and as the groove starts to cut, move the plane back along the edge of the board until you're cutting the entire length. Then keep going until the depth stop hits the edge of the board. It doesn't take long, especially in softwood like this. When the plane stops cutting, you know you're down to depth. And that's our rebate. I repeat this process for all of the other boards. With the rebates cut, we can test them against the material we're going to use for the base. I've cut the rebates so that they are slightly deeper than the thickness of the plywood. Next we need to do something to cut the slots for the lid to slide into. To do this, I'm going to use my combination plane, using it as a plough plane. The combination plane also has a fence and a depth stop, and a number of cutting bits designed for different profiles. Unlike the rebate plane, the combination plane will allow you to cut a groove in the middle of the face rather than on the edge of a board. The first job is to assemble the plane, and select the cutter. I'm selecting a cutter which is slightly wider than the thickness of the plywood material. I'll show this sequence in real time for people not familiar with this kind of plane. First of all I fit the pillars or rails for the fence. And then I'll position the fence. I'll just add it to the end for now and I'll just it into position later. Next the cutter goes in. I put it roughly in position and pull back the adjustment knob and then secure it with the bolt. The bolt takes a washer and then a wing nut to tighten. It only needs to be finger tight. Next we add the depth stop, and I'll set this to the depth I require. I'll use a screwdriver to tighten this to stop it from slipping. The adjuster lever controls how deep the cutting iron will protrude from the base of the plane. It doesn't want to be too deep. To help ensure a neat cut, I'm going to use my marking gauge to mark in the edges of the groove. I mark along the internal face using the gauge, and then use my marking knife and ruler to make the cut deeper. This will help to ensure a nice crisp edge when using the plane. I then use this guide to set the fence position on the plane.
I want my workpiece to be nice and secure while I'm using the plane, so I'm going to use my plane stop and actually screw in some guide blocks to keep the piece in position. In a similar way as using the rebate plane, I start at the end of the cut and then work my way backwards across the length of the board. The workpiece is lifting slightly as I'm applying pressure, so I'm going to screw in another guide block to keep everything secure so I can make sure that the cut is square. That's a lot more secure. And it stops cutting now because I've hit the depth stop. And I use a scrap piece of the ply just to test the fit. Looks good. I repeat this process for the other sides. In order for the lid to come out, one of the end pieces doesn't actually need the groove, it needs removing. So I'm going to select this end piece because it's got a horrible knot in there which isn't doing any good to anyone. I'm going to start by cutting off the excess wood by following the line of the groove. This is quite brittle. Hence it just comes straight off. So I'll come in from the other side and we're going to be left with that horrible knot in the middle. I'll remove the bulk of the knot using a thin curved pull saw. I'm just doing this so it doesn't rip out. Now I can finish everything off nicely with the plane. I didn't want to run the plane over the knot while it was all protruding, so getting it roughly to size with the saw was the best idea. I probably should have chosen a better piece of wood to start with, but then I wouldn't have been able to show you how to deal with the knot. That's quite nice now. Right, and there are all our sides. A quick dry assembly. Next we need to cut the base. The measurements for the base size are to add the internal dimension to the rebate. I then use a square to transfer this onto the ply. I clamp it to the bench so I can cut it out with a handsaw. I'm cutting on the outside of the line because I'm going to use a plane to bring things down to the final size. Using a plane I can get things down to the final size and also ensure that everything's nice and neat. When cutting plywood with a handsaw like this it's quite common to rip out some of the surface on the underside. It's not such a big deal in this case because this is for the bottom and so it's going to be hidden. But when I come to do the top I'm going to need to do something about that. A final check that everything's square. And we can do a cold fit. Looks good. So if I've managed to make everything square, the base should work as a lid. So I flip everything over, take the base out, and try it in the lid groove. And that fits nicely. So it means I can use this as a template for cutting the lid.
which is what I'm doing here. So same process again, I'll mark everything up, cut it out roughly, and then I'll plane to size. Earlier, I mentioned the potential for tear out when cutting plywood. To combat this, I'm going to use some paper tape. I'll put this on both sides of the cut, and it should help to stop the surface laminate from tearing out. Not the best sawing I've ever done. So I can peel off the tape and then use the plane to get things down to the final size. And that seems to fit nicely. Now it's time to assemble the box. I wanted to make sure I had the base and the lid cut before assembling the box, even though I won't be gluing in the base at this stage. By having them in position whilst doing the glue up, it will help to keep everything nice and square. I simply apply a small amount of glue to each of the mating surfaces, and then push everything into position. I place the base into position, and then I add some clamps. I flip the box so that I can add the lid. First of all, I make sure there's no excess glue because the last thing I want to do is end up getting the lid stuck into the box. At this stage, I can check that everything's nice and square. And if it isn't, I can put a bit of pressure on the corners to bring it into alignment. The important thing is that everything was cut square in the first place. And I'll just check that the lid still fits because that's a good guide of square. And I'll leave that to cure. The white marks you can see on the side are where I added some wood filler into the knots. I'll remove all the clamps. That's looking good. So, as I mentioned, we didn't actually fix the bottom in. We're going to do that now. I just need to run a bead of glue around the inside of the rebate. and then place the base in. To hold this during glue up, I can either add some weights onto the base, or I can add the lid and use this as a clamping surface and just clamp straight across the box. This is my preferred method. Once the glue has cured, we take the clamps off and get ready to neaten up those joints. I'll take the bulk of the protruding tenons off using a flush cut saw. As its name suggests, the flush cut saw allows me to cut the tenon flush to the surface of the box. This one happens to be a pull saw, which means it cuts on the pull stroke. I'll work my way around the box and cut off all the protruding tenons. I then neaten everything up using a chisel, keeping the back of the chisel flush to the box and using a skewing action to cut through. And optionally using a block plane just to finish off. And that's nice and neat. As a result of cutting the rabbit straight across, we've got these little gaps at the edge. To fix this, I just cut some little plugs to size out of some waste material. I can glue these in and then neaten them up. I'll use some paper tape to hold things while it glues and repeat the process for all of the corners.
Once the glue's dried, we remove the paper and neaten everything up. Once again, using a flush cut saw and then a chisel. And we can finish things off with a bit of sanding. While I'm at it, I'll sand the rest of the box. This will get rid of that excess wood filler. And I can also use it to round over any of the sharp corners while I'm at it, making it nice and comfortable to handle. Next we need to make room for the lid handle by cutting off the excess each side. I'll just mark this off. And then cut with the saw. I'm using my dovetail saw here but any tenon saw will do. I'm using a flush cut saw here again just to make it easier to get it level with the edge. And then, as ever, I'll neaten up with the chisel. Right, and I'll try the lid in position once again. So I need something to pull the lid in and out. So, first of all, I'll look in my offcuts to see if I've got any nice bits of bead to use. But I didn't really have anything the right size, so I decided to cut up some scrap wood. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a rebate into this. This is so that I can wrap it around the edge of the ply. I then saw and plane the handle closer to size. And try it in position. That looks about right. So I'm just going to glue that on now. I've got excess at the top, the bottom and the sides, but we'll cut that to size later, once it's attached firmly. I'll leave that to glue up first. The excess wood on the handle will stop the lid from going all the way home and it just so happens that the distance it stops short is the same as the distance we need to cut off to allow it to go all the way. So we'll mark this in on the lid. So I can plane the excess off of the bottom of the handle so that it's flush with the bottom of the plywood. Then I can plane the lid to the right size. Now that the lid pushes all the way in, we can put it in place and mark up the excess we need to cut off the sides. This is a cross cut, the same as when we were cutting the wood to length right back at the beginning, so we'll use the same method. We'll mark up with a knife, Use the chisel to make a groove for the saw and then cross cut. The lid now goes fully home so we can put everything in position, clamp it up and use a plane to make everything flush. A 
And there we go, everything's to size and fits. I'm just going to do a bit of sanding to round over the handle to make it comfortable to use. There are a couple of gaps from when we made the rebate for the handle and we'll just fill these using the same method as we did for the rebates at the base. A bit of gentle sanding around the edge of the lid will just help it slide better and I'll take off the sharp corners while I'm at it. That's construction complete so it's time to finish the box and the base. I'm going to use Danish oil. I use a paper towel to add a decent amount and then I'll let this soak in for at least a day. I'll then sand everything back and give it another coat. Let that dry, sand that. I'll probably give it about three coats in total. You can check out some of my other project videos for a more in-depth look at this process. While that's drying I'm going to add a logo to the lid. To do this I'm going to use a transfer method using Mod Podge. This is just a design that I've printed out on a laser printer. I have a separate video that shows this transfer method and I'll put a link in the description below. The basic method is to cut out your design, cover it in Mod Podge or PVA and then stick it face down to your wood. That's why the image has been printed in reverse. You leave everything to dry and then using water and a sponge soak off all the backing paper until just the transfer remains. Once everything's dry I add a few coats of spray varnish lightly sanding between each layer. As a final finish to the box I use some food safe wax. I rub in a decent amount and leave it for a while and then buff it out. This leaves everything nice and shiny and a pleasure to handle. Finally it's time to add the goodies and this is where all those plain shavings come in handy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please press like. Click subscribe and hit the alert bell if you want to see more project videos when we post them.